and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Now, I can't really start today's video without first thanking so many of you for your positivity and support around the Drive the World trip announcement. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back, watch my last video where I announced next year that I'm going to be doing a 12-month round the world trip. You can find out more info on seenthroughglass.com, my new website, which we all managed to crash on Sunday, but is now back live again. Or you can find more info on the Kickstarter page, which unbelievably raised £5,000 in the first 24 hours. You're all unbelievable, you're insane, you're mad. Today, you join me in the quite bonkers Hyundai i30N. So in case you missed it, the Cayman is now sold. Uh, my 360 is in having a service, more on that to come soon. Uh, and Ivan has been temporarily signed off work by the car doctor, again, more on that soon. So I was in need of some wheels and Hyundai came to the rescue with this just a hilarious little car. If you're looking at like Golf GTIs or anything in that kind of bracket, have a look at this because in its sportiest mode, it's mad, it's so much fun. I've been really, really enjoying it. And today I'm driving it to Bicester to visit Bicester Heritage, which is essentially Toys R Us for vintage and classic cars. Toys R Us analogy in a post on Instagram and lots of you very correctly pointed out that Toys R Us have gone bust, they're out of business. So there's really no symmetry between them and Vista Heritage because Vista Heritage is booming. What I meant was when I get to Vista Heritage, I'm expecting to find lots of shiny things that I want to buy like I used to do when I used to go to Toys R Us because Vista Heritage, once again to say their name in full, uh, is essentially a hub for businesses that focus on classic car ownership. So there's loads of specialists there that all offer services around vintage and classic car ownership and I think some other bits as well. So yes, as I say, I'm expecting to get there and fall in love with lots of things that I want to buy. That was the, that's what I was trying to do. Anyway, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. This place is ridiculous. I've had to sit down on a bench just to sort of, just to let it all sink in. I've had a quick tour around, seen some stuff, which you would have now seen as well. And in every corner of this place, there are incredible cars, incredible machines. Now, they do range from 60s, 70s, even up until the sort of 90s, back to the sort of 20s and 30s. A lot of pre-war things knocking around. Now, my knowledge, my experience of pre-war cars is very, very limited, but I don't feel like I can come here and not learn a little bit. So hopefully we're gonna to learn together uh, and experience some of those really old cars. But I wanna start off with something a bit more familiar and 911's classic. 911, something's coming now. I don't even know what this is, but... There's always cool stuff going on. This is, you always just hear things. It's like being on Sloan Street, but for classics instead of supercars. But yeah, I want to start off with 911s because I feel a bit more comfortable there. I like ogling them. And on the way here, I started thinking, obviously I've mentioned the Drive the World trip a couple of times in this video. Could I take a classic around the world? Is that a mad thing to even contemplate? Potentially, but it'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? So yeah. First stop, Sports Purpose, who are one of the 911 specialists here at Vista Heritage. Boys and girls, this is James from Sports Purpose, who is now going to show us around, uh, well, your showroom, I suppose, which is a bloody amazing showroom. Everything is beautiful here at Vista Heritage, I'm learning. And also, everything we're going to see is for sale, right? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, this has to go to a good home because it's an unbelievably special car because it's an original paint, original everything, 356. Probably one of the most original 356s in the world. But it's not for everybody because it's got little bits of pass nowhere, presumably he yeah. does something Some on the here way there. to the bar or something. <laughs> we wanted to have a garage like we would want to come to ourselves and, and the same speaks for the way that we work. So it's ideally in you know, a very chilled environment where we've got cars parked by our desk, we've got nice furniture, we've got the dog comes in. Uh, this is a fun car. This is my Paul Smith car that I did. Uh, this is my own racing car that I built this year um, with the nice fellows at Tuthill Porsche. Um, and I know Paul Smith a little bit and we agreed to do a car together. He thought it was time. This is in their wider stripe, this is their artist stripe, but the, uh, the tweak is that the stripe continues through the middle. I was going to say, the coolest thing is that, look, if you open up the interior, yeah. it all carries over. That's just, a, it's awesome. Attention and to the, detail, but just, I love the it theme. It carries over under the wings, under the bonnet, through the engine bay. The, wow. They did an amazing, amazing job at Tuthill. And it's a pure built two litre race car, like the one we're going to see over there. Amazing. Um, but this will be my car forever. I'll be. I'll be going to get the baguettes in this in 20 years time. <laughs> You'll be the biggest uh, baller getting baguettes ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bizarrely, there's only seven years between that one and that one. And there's mm, nearly 27 years between those two. And you wouldn't have thought to look at it, but obviously this is very close to where Paul started, a 356, a speedster. But then next to it, you've got my race car. One of the things we've done to promote our new business this year as, as Porsche Garage, is set up a one mate series for these early pre-66 two litre cars so a very very simple driving 911 we had 41 cars at the first round at uh, spa uh, we raced at le mans at the le mans classic race we raced at dijon and at paul ricard and uh, this car came third uh, with me and dickie meaden sharing it um, at paul ricard in september different to a 964 rs which which most of your guys would know this is actually a cup car so as you look at it it's, uh, it's got a totally stripped out interior. The thing I love about this car is it's done 90,000 kilometers. That's amazing. So whichever maniacs have owned it have actually used it properly. It's had this livery on it for 15 years. And, and famously, Mika Hakkinen was a young McLaren test driver and uh, someone dropped out of driving the car. He did a test day with Walter Roll. He went to Monaco and put this on pole position on the car in this livery. And, and won the race uh, very comfortably and uh, everyone said to him it's very impressive Mika and he said but it's easy because you just straighten it out on the barriers at the <laughs> end of the corners uh, and you can imagine him doing that and to drive it's wonderful you know very pure very simple slightly rorty so uh, 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 you know a, a really good thing now I have a question for you because uh -huh. you just mentioned that this car's done 90,000 90, kilometers or Correct. miles kilometers yeah. do you think I uh, could drive a classic Porsche around the world. Yeah, big time. I, Do you? I think it would be perfect. Really? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, because you've got this cool project and, and I can think of nothing. It's funny, this car, you know, we built this over last winter with, with Mike Jordan, um, who's expert, and Richard Tuthill, but it feels like an old thing. It feels like an old friend already. When I sit in the seat, I feel happy in it. And um, you could drive the around the world in a modern car, of course, but you know, this would be a lovely thing to travel in. It'd be lovely. We're about to take this out onto the test track that they have here at Bista Heritage, because if it wasn't cool enough that they have all of these services around, they've also got a test track. So um, I may be about to fall in love with this very car uh, and then, yeah, actually start to seriously contemplate taking a classic around the world. This could get very, very expensive. But anyway, thank you so much for showing, around, uh, showing us around the showroom. Um, and yeah, let's go and enjoy this now, I guess. Out on track. Now, I don't often refer to 1970s Porsches as modern cars, but we're going to leave those modern cars behind us because here at Bista, this is what you call a classic or vintage car. This is a 1930s Talbot or Talbot? Tal Tal 
Talbot, Talbot, there we go, Talbot, uh, in uh, maybe you could call it a stunning green, it's definitely an eye-catching green, and I'm going to experience what one of these cars is like. I've never even sat in something like this, I don't know what to expect. It's got a pre-selector gearbox, so essentially you select the gear uh, before you go into a corner, then you hit a pedal and the gear comes up. It's, it's all completely backwards and like nothing I've ever experienced before, but I'm super excited, super excited. Look, I can't even speak, that's how excited I, I just had an espresso. Anyway, very excited to check this out. Knee down, swing leg, bum, oh, and then yank, oh, oh, bloody hell, not made for lanky people, are they? to Pendine, who are one of the sort of, I guess, car, another car dealership or specialist uh, here at Bista Heritage. These guys focus a little bit more on the post-war stuff, so again, a bit more up my street. Um, they've got some insane things lying around. Every room I walk into, I want things. I'm like, oh, my wallet needs to go on lockdown. But anyway, yeah, check out this Group C Nissan car. We're going to find out more about that in a second. But to continue the whole Porsche 911 theme, come check out this. To show us around this lovely car, we have James. I'm going to call you Banny. I was going to give you like a full, but you're, you're Banny. Um, he actually has nothing to do with Pendine. He just is obsessed with this car. So I feel like he's one of the best per person. You're stroking it. Stop stroking it. <laughs> so talk to me. What is a Carrera CS? It is a Carrera Club Sport, which is a 3.2 Carrera. But basically, they do the classic Porsche thing of making things lighter. Completely stripped out, blue printed engine, close ratio gearbox, track setup suspension, and it's just the most underrated Porsche in the world. <laughs> so it's its biggest fanboy. It's the, the, yeah, tied the best thing I've ever driven in my entire life. Okay, and what year are we talking about? This is an 80, 80, 80, 87. 87. 88. 88, yeah. Asking the expert. <laughs> 88. 88, okay. G Series platform. Just the best, honestly, it, it, it doesn't sound like much, taking a bit of weight out, blueprinting the engine, little things like that, but this is greater than the sum of its parts. It is just one of the most direct, engaging, involving, but equally really comforting, you don't feel afraid of it, and you can just rag the nuts off it instantly. We're now ditching the fanboy, because <laughs> Johnny, who actually works at Pendone, is going to show us this Group C Nissan, which, I mean, it looks mad, but I understand it's even more mad than it looks. It is completely bonkers. So it's a Nissan NPT90. Uh, it won Sebring 12 hour race in 1991. And uh, it produces four tonnes of downforce at 200 miles an hour. Four tonnes? Which is about twice as much as a modern uh, GT car. And it's top speed, well, it depends how, uh, yeah, how, how brave, how you, brave are. you are, really. <laughs> so all of the downforce is basically through these openings here, and it's uh, all done by ground effects. So the wing does nothing other than to stabilise it. In fact, it's not movable at all. Only the top plane is just to balance a car when you're going 200 odd miles an hour down the all sound straight. <laughs> the rest of it just literally sucks to the floor. Does it sound that? It, yeah, it sounds pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. So it's a twin turbo V6. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely stunning. So, Such a cool thing to see here. Monster. And I love just the difference between having this next to this stunning, beautiful E-Type. Yeah, e -type. It's, e -type. it's a real contrast, isn't it? Absolute yeah. contrast, but brilliant. Yeah. You have a fantastic showroom here. Thank you so Thank much. You Thanks much. for having me down. Yeah, no, um, uh, there you go, guys. All the selections currently down here at Pendai. There is not enough time in the day or in the year to film everything that's going on at Bista Heritage. I have to leave now and I'm so gutted about that because I feel like I've sort of touched the tip of the iceberg, filmed the tip of the iceberg. I haven't really shown you any of the workshops, any of the, the sort of engineering that's going on. I've just kind of filmed the dealerships, but maybe that's an excuse to come back another time. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a hell of a lot of fun. Whenever I spend time around classics, I fall in love with the idea of owning one. It's just, you know, the, the stories around them, the character. I feel like they have more character than modern cars. Anyway, bye-bye, Test Track, bye-bye.
old things. Uh, hopefully I'll be up here again soon. They do lots of cool events at Vista Heritage, so maybe I could get along to one of those. And as I say, I just want to explore. I just want to keep exploring. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.